Hi, today we're going to be looking at some JSON parsing. So during the live lecture, I covered some details about the JSON format, uh, which is a recursive format. You can have things like um, JSON objects, which are really just JSON maps, and JSON lists, which will then, both of these things could contain um, some objects of the same type or back and forth. So you can have arbitrarily deep um, things. So because we have these recursive formats like JSON, it's often uh, convenient to write recursive code. So that's what I'm going to be walking you through um, today. I'm not going to go over simple examples like Fibonacci or things like that. I'm going to try to walk through a real-world example. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to look at a subset of JSON. So I'm going to look at JSON objects and then strings and numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to take um, a JSON object and then pretty print it. And why is that useful? Well, it's pretty much the simplest thing we can do while still interacting um, with JSON. So first, let me show you an example of what pretty printing is, and then we'll actually write some code. So I'm going to compile um, my JSON printer, and I have a solution here. So this is just to show you what the final product looks like. So I'm going to compile that. And I have an error, and that's because I have a jar file that I need to depend on. Okay, so let me actually just take a look at my notes. And I need to set up a class path so that the JVM knows where to find this library. Uh, this JSON simple parser is just a, a library that Google provides for parsing JSON files. And I really, I can peek inside of there, and I can see that they have a few um, classes that are interesting to us, in particular, this JSON object, which allows us to map keys to values. Okay, so now that I've uh, exported my class path, I can actually um, compile this. So I'm going to compile that as so. And now let's actually run it. Uh, so I'm going to run the JSON printer solution. And I need to give it a JSON string. So each object begins with these curly braces. And inside I can put um, keys. So for example, let's say the key is name and then value. So for example, let's say I put Alice as the value. I can do that as so. And uh, so what does pretty printing look like? Uh, let's say Alice is a student in, in a class and we are keeping track of her scores. So in this object, we could also uh, have sub objects. And for this, what I'll do is I'll um, Put multiple exams. So I could have exam one um, as a key in this sub object. So the sub object is right here. And then we can give her a score for that. Um, and let's say that we'll have exam two be looking for a 95 on that one. Okay. And so it's pretty printing because instead of just printing off this string as, as it's provided, um, we get this nice nesting. Um, each each JSON object starts indented in one more, and then the keys and values are further indented in. And we don't have any ugly punctuation um, or commas around anything. Um, so, okay, so how can we do this? So we clearly have some recursion, right? This JSON object contains other JSON objects, and our code has to be prepared if we further um, nest inside of here. You know, I could, instead of just having it end with 90, I could have further objects deeper, but I won't do that for now. Okay, so let's take a look at um, what the current state of the program is that we want to fix. So this is JSON printer.java. And this is the unfinished one, so I'm going to cut solution out of the name and run that. And I see that I have one layer of nesting, but this um, pretty printer is not recursive. So um, I, I get a basically an ugly string on one line, whereas before this would be split over multiple lines. So let's take a look at the code. So JSON printer.java. Uh, one of the first things I'll look at is I can see that I'm depending on these um, uh, these classes that came from that jar file I was showing. And let's head on down to the main function. So I see here that I'm taking in one argument, which is the JSON string. And all of this stuff is just parsing um, the JSON using that library to uh, basically Java objects that represent the JSON. And then we're using this JSON printer and this is the class that we're writing. And in particular, we're going to write this print object method. Okay, so let me head up to print object, which is right here. Okay, so I have this. And then the only other <coughs> uh, method in this class is this print indent, which is just printing some white space. And we're going to use that um, for, for our parser. Okay, so we're in print object. We take this JSON object, which is basically the Java representation of the string that's passed in. And you can see that we're passing in these brackets. Um, and then what we're doing is, within that JSON object, remember that there's a series of, of mappings from keys to values. So we're enumerating over the keys, and we're casting those to strings. 
and then we're getting all the corresponding values. And then for each of these values, we have one layer of indenting, and then we just print the value. And because we're doing a printf, uh, Java is just calling two string on this value. And that's why we get that ugly format where it's all on one line. So let me, let me just head back and actually um, run this again so we can see the code um, as we're going. So let me, let me copy this here. Okay, so we're going to edit this. And I'm just going to do a split screen here in Emacs. So I can open up a bash shell down below and then I can run the code and we can see the code um, and the output at the same time. So I'm going to run this. And so this is what we really want to fix here. So how do we do this? What code printed this? This was printed up in this print object function right here, right? So this is what we want to fix. Now, sometimes the values are truly um, things that we can just do two string on. For example, this is a value we don't want to mess with. But in cases where the value is a JSON object, we want to recursively call our print object method so that we can get this same nice indenting pattern. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check what type the value is. And I can use the Java instance sub, and that's a JSON object. And if, if it is a JSON object, we're going to do one thing. Otherwise, we're going to do our old pattern of just um, letting Java print it out as it wants. Now, when you learn object-oriented programming, um, you were probably told to avoid um, instance of. And the reason why is that um, instead of uh, having instance of, you could often override um, methods when you inherit from something. So for example, uh, if I were writing this Java library from scratch, I could have each JSON object or JSON string or anything like that have a print method, and they could all do the same thing. So then through this polymorphism, I could handle this very cleanly. Um, so why, do, why are we using instance of here? The reason is, is that I did not write this JSON object method, so it's not so easy for me to extend it. And, and because of that, we have to do uglier things like instance of. So anyway, so there are legitimate UK cases for instance of, although it's not the pattern that you generally want to do. But in this case, we're going to use it, and we're going to call our method, which is print object, okay? and we're going to pass in a JSON object to it. So I'm going to head down here, and I'm going to say um, print uh, object, and I'm going to pass in this value. Okay, well, just like so. And, and of course, we're expecting a JSON object, so I'm going to cast it to that. And that's safe because I already checked right here that that is actually its type. Okay, so let me run this as an intermediate state. So I'm going to run Java C on this. Last names. I see, I need to actually say Java C, um, dot Java. Okay, so I compiled that, <coughs> and now I can run it. And when I run it, I don't actually need Java at the end. <coughs> so I'm passing it the same thing. And we see that we've made some progress, you know, before all of this was on one line, and now it's spread off. So we are actually doing the recursion. I call print object here, which then um, executes again. So we have some level of nesting now. Uh, but it's not quite what we want. Um, each time we go in one level deeper, we would like this to be indented farther than this. Okay? So we need to add some level of indenting in front of everything that we print. Right? So let me just open this here. So we're printing a few things here. We're printing this opening brace. We're printing this closing brace. And then we do some printing here and here together. Okay? Now, the opening brace... We put all of that on one line, so we don't have to do anything there. Let me head back to my shell. You can see that when I do the scores, I want this to be on the same line. <clears throat> so I never have to print indenting here. Um, so really, the, the closing brace is the more interesting um, case. So somehow we have to do some amount of indenting right here. Um, so I'm going to do print indent. And we don't know how much we want to do here. And, and, and the reason why is as we keep going in, we have to go farther and farther. So what this means is that as we keep recursing, we want to have some sort of counter that keeps ticking up. So I'm going to add that variable now, and I'm just going to call it int indent. And on the first layer of um, indenting, we never want to indent at all. So right away, um, when I call this indent function, down at the beginning, I'm going to pass in zero, right? So the first level will have no indenting in front of the braces. 
Okay, so let's head back up here. So now we have this new indent variable, so I'm going to pass this in. And that will fix that closing brace. Okay, now what we would like is that, see how name is indented one more than the braces? So when we are doing indent one here, so when we do indent here, what we want to do is we want to do indent plus one before we print the values. Right, so these, these mappings will be one level deeper. Now, the last thing we need to do here is when we recurse, we need to keep ticking that indent off. So each level you go in will, will be one more. So I'm going to say indent here. And, and this should probably be right, so let me actually run this now. That compiles. And voila, that's exactly what we want. Um, each level we go in, it goes one farther, um, and, and we basically get this nice pretty output. Um, so before I wrap up, I'm just going to do um, a slightly more complex example um, where I show many levels deep just to make sure that um, we have a general solution. Um, maybe I'll do one more level. I'll run that, and sure enough, I get the nice nesting um, just as I would like. So of course, this is a subset of, of JSON. Uh, if you want to have a more general solution, you have to have not only JSON objects, but you would have to have um, JSON lists. So let me let me actually head back and take a look at that jar file we were talking about. So we're covering this case of the JSON object, which is probably better called something like a JSON map or JSON dictionary. Um, if you want to have a more complete solution, you also do this JSON array, but I'm going to leave that as an exercise um, to the viewer.